Hello Year 9 and welcome to the MFL Pathway Assembly. Because languages are a core subject in the EBAP qualification, everyone will continue either French or Spanish all the way to GCSE. So this is your opportunity to find out more about one of the subjects you'll be studying over the next two years. So why learn languages at GCSE? Let's take a moment to understand why languages are vital before we look at what the GCSE course involves. To start us off, you will see three statements about languages on the screen. After I read each one out, you'll have a few seconds to decide if you think it's true or false. Number one, teenagers and young adults learn second languages more quickly and easily than young children. True or false? This one's true. The brain of teenagers and young adults is flexible enough to learn a second language, and they have had the chance to be exposed to grammatical rules and vocabulary in their own language, which makes the learning of a second language easier. Number two. Language learning is unnecessary with modern translation technologies. True or false? This one's false. It's true that Google Translate can help you with vocabulary, but how about grammar? How can you get to communicate in real life? It's not a substitution for actually learning a language. OK, final statement. Number three, pretty much everyone speaks English these days. True or false? False. Just one quarter of the world population speaks English to some degree. So how about the remaining five billion people? Now, from the image on the screen, you can see that whilst many people in the world do speak English, the majority don't. By adding French or Spanish, you are able to communicate with more people around the world and open up more opportunities. So what are the benefits of having a language GCSE? A GCSE in French or Spanish makes you more employable. People who speak a language earn, on average, 12% more from their job than people who don't. It gives you the edge in the job market. As many people only know one language, it makes you stand out more. And it's a facilitating subject. It's a subject that universities look favourably upon when students apply. Don't just take my word for it, though. Let's look at what real businesses in the UK think about the importance of languages. 77% of British exporters believe they lose business because they can't speak other languages. So there's a real need for foreign languages in the workplace. 60% of UK employers are dissatisfied with the foreign language skills of school leavers. Employers are disappointed that young people who do not do GCSE French or Spanish don't have basic language skills, so you will be standing out and bucking that trend. Most employers do not require complete fluency. They want conversational ability, which will have a good impression to help to build relationships and make new contacts. You don't need to be completely fluent in a language to use it in the workplace. The skills you gain from GCSE are the perfect starting point. So apart from opportunities for employment, what else do you gain from learning a language? You can communicate with native speakers from all over the world. And you may have seen this quote from Nelson Mandela. Learning a language is about communication with people in a meaningful way. And it is a skill which will enable you to forge relationships with people and friendships with people from all over the world. Now, equally, we learn languages to understand other cultures and ways of life. All of us MFL teachers at ARC Academy have lived abroad in different countries, some of us in more than one country, and it's through learning a language that these experiences have enabled us to really understand life in a different setting and, of course, make memories abroad. So now let's hear some of our sixth formers who enjoyed languages so much at GCSE that they continue to study further. What did they enjoy about it? I chose French because I want to have larger options when I go into uni and job-wise.
Um, I chose French because I didn't want to be pigeonholed into a specific career. I wanted to have outlets so that I can use my, use my language and skills that I've learned from it in other places of work. So what will you study? You will build the four skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing in class and at home. You will develop your vocabulary and grammatical structures. You will revisit content from Key Stage 3, but in a more grown up way. So you will see topics that you've done in Year 7, 8 and 9, but in a mature way. Equally, other topics you study will be brand new. You will study five themes, each of which are divided into subtopics. Theme one, identity and culture, is divided into who am I, daily life and cultural life. Theme two, local area, holiday and travel, is divided into holidays, travel and tourist transactions, and town, region and country. Theme three, school, is what school is like and school activities. Theme four, future aspirations, study and work, is divided into using languages beyond the classroom, ambitions and work. And the theme we study in year 11, the most complex but most interesting theme, international and global dimension, we look at bringing the world together and environmental issues. At the end of year 11, you will sit four exams in each of the skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing. Each exam is worth 25% of your final grade. There is no coursework and you will sit either higher tier or foundation tier for the exams. Now, if you can speak, read and write one of the following languages fluently, you could take a heritage language GCSE in addition to French or Spanish. You'll be able to let the school know during your pathways interview and you would then sit a short assessment in autumn in year 10 to see what your level of writing is like. Finally, what does a model GCSE MFL student look like? They're hardworking, they're re resilient, they take risks, they're committed, they're reliable, they're always learning, they're interested in the world around them, and they have excellent attendance. So thank you for listening, and please do ask your French or Spanish teacher if you have any questions. Au revoir, adios.